Mateus. Welcome to my second video on the helpers of St. Nicholas in Europe. If you haven't seen the first part, you might want to check that out first, the link's in the description below. In this video, I'll discuss a few elements that I believe are likely to have contributed to the creation of St. Nicholas's helpers. It took many years for St. Nicholas and his companion to take their modern form. First of all, when it comes to the macabre winter celebration, what people were looking for was a boogeyman figure to frighten children into obedience. If you don't go to bed now, he will come for you. If you don't study hard enough, he will come and get you. That type of stuff. Depending on what region or even what village you were from, the appearance and name of these winter boogeymen differed much more than they do today. But it's very remarkable that they all seem to draw from the archetypes that are often reported by people who suffer from sleep paralysis. For those of you that are unfamiliar with sleep paralysis, it's something that happens to certain people when they're about to fall asleep or about to wake up. During a sleep paralysis episode, one's brain is only partially asleep resulting in the illusion that one is fully awake, but unable to move. Elements of actual dreams seem to seep into reality as terrifying hallucinations of figures standing next to one's bed, or sitting on one's chest. The exact appearance of the figures that appear during sleep paralysis seem to depend on the culture. But in Western countries, some of the most common types are the following. The old hag, a stereotypical witch. We can see this archetype in Italian folklore as La Befana. She may not be an assistant of St. Nicholas, but she does have a scary appearance and visits children to bring gifts at the beginning of the new year. Another archetype is the bearded man. Obviously, Saint Nicholas himself falls into this category. But also his companions, Knecht Ruprecht, some versions of Père Fouettard and Schmutzli, Hauseka, and so on. Also frequently reported as a sleep paralysis archetype is the horned figure. The companion that corresponds with this most clearly is Campus, of course. But there are traces of corn companions in other regions too. In this drawing from 1896, Knecht Hubricht is depicted as a horned infant with wings. Also, in one account from the late 18th century, a man from Groningen in the Netherlands tries to convince his readers that the tradition of enacting St. Nicholas visits is simply too terrifying and even harmful to children. He recounts a childhood memory as follows. On the night of the 5th of December, a man with a mask and cow horns, draped in a cow skin, unexpectedly entered his residence. While making a lot of noise with his wooden clocks, and a chain yet tied around his waist, the spectre-like appearance said, Are there any bad children here? Much later, we can still find a trace of a horned companion of Saint Nicholas in the Low Countries, as this photograph from 1939, taken in Mechelen, in Belgium, testifies. archetype is probably also the most common one. The Shadow Man, a pitch black figure with or without a hat. Like I've said before, the blackened face is common among most types of helpers of Saint Nicholas. Campus, Knecht Ruprecht, Schmutzli, Hausica, Père Fouettard and Swartepiet. 
but in the case of Suartepit, his afro-textured hair and in some portrayals exaggerated big lips and face makeup that is dark brown rather than black makes it hard to deny that stereotypes of sub-Sahara Africans have been involved, although the explicit mentions of African roots are very rare for Zwartepiet. However, the alternative interpretation that his skin was dark because of the soot from the chimney seems to have been around for more than a few years. It has been perceived as problematic for a while that a servant in chains that's feared by many children also happens to look like a caricature of a black African. So this has definitely influenced recent changes in his character and even appearance. Rather than a scary, aggressive servant, Zwarte Piet is now a sweet and funny entertainer who happens to be the co-worker and friend of Saint Nicholas. When it comes to his appearance, the scary chain and birch rod were omitted a long time ago but his face and hair hadn't been adapted to the story of the chimney soot at first. In recent years though, elements that make Swartepeet look like a caricature of an African man are starting to get omitted. Once we get rid of the idea of Swartepeet being a slave, I personally think we should give him back his chain and birch rod and have him reconnect with his demonic past, but I'm afraid not too many people here will agree. So there's two popular explanations of Zwartepiet's black face, but neither the theory of an African origin, nor the theory of chimney soot on his face, seem to explain why this black figure emerged in St. Nicholas lore. Several sleep paralysis archetypes can be found in St. Nicholas lore, but who else were witches, a black face? horns and shaggy hair associated with throughout the Middle Ages. The Christian devil, of course, and consequently, demons in general. In the case of Campus, it's very clear that the iconography of the medieval devil has something to do with it. But is Suarte Piet really a devil too? He is, so it seems. Several Dutch books from the 18th and 19th century indicate that before he became the companion of Sinterklaas, the name Zwarte Piet was understood to be a name for the devil. Another book from the 19th century mentions neither Zwarte Piet nor Saint Nicholas, but the devil is depicted in a way that is strikingly similar to how Zwarte Piet is portrayed in the Low Countries today. It is therefore clear, I think, that the macabre helpers of St. Nicholas all derived from depictions of the devil. The typical physical traits seen in the medieval depictions of the devil are not really based on the Bible though. An important source of inspiration was almost certainly the pre-Christian woodland deity, Pan. I believe that this deity was easiest to demonize because it perfectly combines several scary archetypes that live in our unconscious mind and are encountered during sleep paralysis. So reports from one's own environment add credibility to his existence. Who knows, maybe even the ancient Greeks themselves got their inspiration for depictions of Pan from sleep paralysis. It's no coincidence that the English word panic derived from the name of this deity. Just one remarkable fact to end with, Saint Nicholas and his helper are believed to visit the homes where children live on the night of the 5th of December. In the ancient Roman countryside, on that very day, there were celebrations in honor of Faunus, which is a Latin name for Pan. Could there be a connection? That was it for this video. If you liked the second part, don't forget to drop me a like and please comment, share and subscribe. If you'd like to have a look at my sources, check out my blog post. And as always, all the links and credits are in the description of this video.
This was Timoteus. Thanks for watching.